This is the chassis of a Boogaboo Fox, and today we're going to do a full disassembly of the central locking mechanism and reassemble it for you in order to show you all of the different components that are inside and how the thing generally functions uh, so that you can troubleshoot uh, what might be wrong with yours. So a Boogaboo Fox hasn't been around for a long time, but uh, I uh, suspect that there's going to be quite a few problems with the central locking mechanism. Uh, it's the definitely the most complex central locking mechanism that they've put forth so far, um, and I don't see the uh, same sturdiness that was uh, on the buffalo and the donkey. Uh, they've kind of gone back to a chameleon type design, even though it functions from both sides and has uh, four pegs uh, instead of two, uh, but we'll get into that when we get inside. Uh, so this is meant to activate both from the internal easy or one hand fold uh, mechanism and the one higher up on the handle. Uh, we recently bought in a Boogaboo Fox and did a series of videos um, and just right out of the box this whole mechanism was very fiddly. Uh, it was fiddly to get it to fold down all the way flat and sometimes fiddly to get it to fold up. And uh, that's also, the reasons for that are also gonna be apparent when we get inside. There are a lot of interlocking plastic mechanisms and um, they all have to find their positions at the same time. And it's meant to work like clockwork, uh, but as I said, it was already fiddly out of the box. And my guess is that over time, when there's a lot of stress put on these various different points, uh, some of the points are not going to easily lock into each other. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of trying to twist these and push these as you're pulling up and down on handles in order to get the whole thing to lock together. Uh, but in any case, let's get into it. In order to open up the central locking mechanism here then, you're gonna need to pop off this panel on the side. You should use a flathead screwdriver. You wanna be careful, uh, unlike the previous versions, is not glued on, but it instead has these very small plastic pegs. These do break relatively easily. They slot into three slots uh, around this metal plate. We are then going to remove the metal plate to do that, you have to unscrew the screw in the center. It is the CRV4 head on the screwdriver. It's a hexagonal, hexagonal head, uh, very commonly used on this part of Boogaboo. There you go, pull it off, plate comes right off, and let's start looking at these discs. So pull off the outside disc. This entire first assembly is trying to come with it, which I'm gonna deal with afterwards. Pull this up a bit and show you what's on the inside here. Okay, so starting from the outside, this is the arm. And uh, as you can see, when I pull up on the button higher on the handle, it's turning this large cylindrical sleeve around a central, um, uh, I would say axle, but in a way it's just made of plastic. So it's not really an axle. Uh, plastic axle. Uh, the way it is functioning uh, as I depress this button up above is that a wire runs down through the shaft of the handle and it goes around this little pulley wheel and then it goes around the disc and then it's spring activated here. Yeah. This shaft connects to a corresponding or the sleeve that goes around the central shaft. Uh, connects to a corresponding sleeve that comes from the other unlocking locking mechanism uh, from the center of the chassis here. So they both lock together and there's like teeth here so that they're like become one piece in a way uh, so that the entire sleeve turns at once uh, which will unlock the mechanism both on the outside here as well as on the inside here in pretty much the same way or exactly the same way, really. Um, okay, if you have trouble with the button on the handle, if you, you can depress the button and pull it up and it does not activate the mechanism, uh, it is quite possible that the spring here has simply popped off or that the wire has popped out. These are not held in very tightly, especially the wire. Um, so if you're lucky, you can just open up this far into the central locking mechanism. Again, if you're having trouble with the button on the handle and uh, just reattach these parts. Um, otherwise, it can also be that the button is damaged on the inside further up. Uh, we're gonna deal with that in a separate video later. So in order to take this apart then and realign it, do not lose this spring. It will fly clear across the room if you just pull this all apart. It's very tiny. But you have this plastic sleeve. And you have this spring. 
Yeah, spring attaches here, right over this little hook, and then attaches to this peg right here. When you are attaching the wire, the wire runs around over this lip, under this lip, and then just sits in there. It doesn't clip in or anything. So it's hard to get it to sit properly until you're actually pushing the sleeve down. There's no proper clip for it. And that's the reason why if this whole central mechanism is a bit loose, um, that wire can pop off and then that button up above won't work because the wire isn't actually pulling on anything. Okay, I'm just gonna put this back together. Detach my spring. See if you can see it on camera while I do it. There we go. Again, it's, you have to really hold all these wire pieces together as you're putting it down. Okay, then you wanna rotate this disc all the way till the wire is taut, and then pull over your spring to that other peg. it once to make sure that it works. Okay, moving on. Okay, the next piece we're going to look at is this large assembly here. I'm just going to pull out. Uh, so on this assembly are these plastic pegs that just slot right on and these lock into these little grooves here as well as corresponding grooves on the first disc that I just showed you and I'm going to show you how it does that in a second. Uh, if you pull these off and look at the rest of this, this is two discs connected together, and they have these big fat spring systems inside. And this is going to uh, shift positions, or actually the positions are here, but this is gonna loosen those pegs so that the pegs can shift positions. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you how this works, but I'm gonna go back to that first disc in order to do so. Okay, so now this piece is gonna slot over like this inside. And uh, before I do that, I just want to show you that on the bottom is this little peg that pops out. And there's a corresponding peg here on the outside of the sleeve that moves. And that is the point at which the mechanism uh, essentially operates, at which the movement uh, that goes with this whole twisting disc is translated to this. Uh, but this thing is going to slot in here. And these pegs slide right into these grooves here. Uh, so if you have, and you got to twist a little bit to get that activating point down. So if, you, uh, if you've had a Boogaboo Chameleon before, or if you've seen our videos, uh, this system functions very similar to the Boogaboo Chameleon, just like a thousand times more complex, um, in that these pegs are going to slide out of those rectangular grooves in order to release this disc. So uh, watch, if I pull in on this button, you can see that it pulls those back, it pulls those inwards. That whole large two circle uh, assembly there in the middle with the springs, all that is for is so that it can contract inwards and pull those pegs out of alignment in those slots so that you can bend stuff. Actually not here, but on the, uh, the next disc, but you can see it best here. It's the same idea. Yeah? Okay, let's have a look at the next piece. Okay, the next piece is this uh, this next, next disc, uh, but the inside part uh, that kind of counts for the locking mechanism is actually removable. And this is the point at which when you pull back those pegs on the first disc, because they don't quite unlock on that first disc, but on the second disc, they do pull down all the way to the bottom of this part that slides and allows the handle section to rotate against the second section and to find a second locking point when the stroller is folded down. In order to remove this internal piece, uh, in case you need to replace it, and also so I can show it on the first disc, you can pull this out a bit and you're going to need to get at it from the back side. So, 
Okay, from the back side, you'll see that there are these two raised portions, these plastic pegs that stick out a bit. And in order to remove that entire internal disc then, I find the easiest thing to do is to press down on these first. You're gonna press them down until they're flush. And then we're gonna lift this portion back up again. Okay, now you can reach inside and pull apart this disc. The reason it feels like there is a little bit of uh, resistance is that there are five small rubber stoppers that help to protect the mechanism, and I'm, I'm sure Boogie Boo claims that it has to do with suspension as well. I suppose it does. Uh, their way of thinking, these little ones. Uh, and we will look at those again when we're putting this back together. back here and I'm gonna show this okay so inside this disc is uh, really kind of where the magic happens in terms of locking it uh, so again you have these grooves which are going to correspond with those uh, those large struts or plastic rectangles and this part just slides right in there and then when I depress that handle button it again pulls in those pegs those struts and then I could turn this. This would uh, be the same as folding down the handle. When you fold down the handle and the bottom portion stays in the same place, uh, what you're essentially doing is turning this inside. It gets to the next position, and then it snaps into port place. Okay, again, notice how many points there are in this mechanism where all of these different things have to line up. This is not just one spring-operated set of pegs. In order to get those pegs to be spring operated, we've already gone through very many connection points. Uh, in any case though, that's how that second part of the mechanism works. Uh, I'll now show you how to put this back in place uh, in case you need to do that when you're replacing defective parts. Okay, before putting this disc back, you're going to have to position these five rubber stoppers. If you look at it, you'll see that it's shaped from the uh, long end, sort of like a chess pawn. The bottom would be flat, the top is a circle. So the flat part goes right up against these plastic pegs. And if you're looking at the peg head on, then it's going to be on the right side with the flat portion of that rubber thing right up against the peg. You're gonna position all five the same way, going around always on the right side of the peg if you're looking directly on it. Then you take the disc and you of course line up these two pegs. They will only slot in one way and uh, position everything and just press it all in together. Okay, now we're gonna start uh, disassembling the inner part of, uh, of the central locking mechanism, which is going to mirror the outer part. So what I'm gonna do is just pull off this piece for a second so I can pull out all these pieces. And then I'm again going to show you how it all looks when you put it on that top disc. Okay, so we'll start by having a look at those internal pieces that we took out. Uh, first is this white piece and it will look almost identical. It's not entirely identical, but it's almost identical to the other piece and it functions in uh, an identical manner. Uh, this piece is the last piece of the central locking mechanism, which is all the way flush up against the inside. And it also has two pegs, and they are also going to lock into corresponding grooves on the inside. In addition, there is this piece, and this is the other half of um, that, like, as I said, there's like a whole central shaft that goes around the central axle. This is the other half of that. If you see, it has these uh, teeth and it has this larger peg here. It corresponds with this larger peg here. And it's gonna sit just like this on top, straight through the mechanism so that it all locks together, yeah? So that those two pieces, those two sleeves become one piece. And then this piece is going to sit right on top as a mirror function to the other side. So now, if I adjust that handle button, 
you'll see that the entire thing is pulling. Now, those, uh, those first two pegs, those are unlocking into that central disc that we showed you, whereas these ones are unlocking into the, uh, the central point where the, uh, where the larger seat strut is, the center part. Alternatively, if you adjust the mechanism from the other side, it also turns the entire shaft and thus unlocks all of those points that connect. So, hopefully, I have made this video such that uh, if you take this thing apart and are very afraid of all of these pieces that you see, you now understand how the, uh, the whole thing functions. Now, the last thing I'm going to do now is to show you how to put the whole thing back together so that it actually works. Okay, you're going to need to reassemble it in this way, working your way from the inside to the outside. So I'm going to start by looking at this piece. Uh, this piece may look symmetrical from both sides, but it is not. Uh, on this side, there is a slight groove cut uh, on one side of the central channel, and on this, there is not. So, the side with the groove needs to face upwards. But before we do that, we have to put these pegs on, and the pegs are going to point downwards so they can slot into the, uh, the little rectangular slots on this one. All right, I'm gonna slot it all the way in so that everything is nice and tight. Next is gonna be this piece. This piece is gonna fit in the middle. You have to kind of pull all this away from each other in order to make it work, and you're just gonna rotate it. There, until it kind of pushes downwards. Uh, there's a little groove here, and you're going to want it kind of angled this way. Otherwise, it won't line up when you're putting the whole thing together. But as long as it kind of clicks into place, then it's going to be correct. So you're going to rotate it until you can feel that it depresses downwards. Okay, then we're going to push this piece over it. Making sure that those line up. And this piece goes in. You always want to check that all your discs are capable of uh, like being completely tight against each other. Because uh, in the end, the whole thing has to be tight against each other. Okay. Then you have this piece, and I've just left these pegs on. Yeah? This is the upwards facing side. The way you know this is the upwards facing side on the black piece, not the white piece, is that only the downwards facing side has this little like uh, shell looking thing, which is like a part that angled out and has three little struts. That goes down. So then I'm just going to slot this in like this. Make sure it's all tight. Okay, then we're going to slide this entire piece on uh, and then make sure that it all holds tightly together. Now if you'll remember uh, on the um, the uh, sleeve that comes out from this piece there is one tooth that is larger and there's a depression on the sleeve from the other side those two do need to line up uh, if you find that they don't then you can remove this piece and make sure these two discs can line up first and then put the piece in there we go and i'm just going to twist a little bit until all of these are flush together okay you're just going to screw this part back on. Lastly is simply, of course, to test that the mechanism now functions and then to put the cap back. And you're just gonna look at these three teeth and make sure that they go into the corresponding holes. If these have broken in the process of taking it off, uh, it's just a matter of using a little bit of super glue to hold it on. Um, it will probably rattle around a bit anyway, just simply because it's been taken apart. So that was our full disassembly and reassembly of the central locking or folding mechanism of the Boogaboo Fox. Uh, we wanted to show you how the whole thing fits together and the various components so that you can troubleshoot any sort of problems that you have yourself. Uh, I really do anticipate there are going to be a lot of problems with this particular mechanism and with this model in general uh, because Boogaboo has kind of gone for this ultra complex, very fragile sort of a setup, uh, which 
doesn't have the longevity that uh, they had with a lot of their previous models, in particular Buffalo and Donkey, which were a lot better built. Um, but in any case, that is how the whole system works. Uh, if you have any specific problems with this mechanism that you uh, don't feel are covered in this video, we'd appreciate it if you would leave a comment below and we will try to help you out. Um, and we would also appreciate it if you would subscribe if this video helped you in some way. Thank you.